Everyone, good morning. My name is Charlie. I'm the rector of St. Paul's. It's good to have you here. Welcome. It's a special day. After the service, we have our annual parish meeting. And that has kind of informed the conversation I want to have with you today. Um, it begins, though, by talking about cooking. We've been talking a lot about cooking at St. Paul's over these last few weeks. We've been talking about pancakes. We've been talking about maple syrup because we're getting f ready for the ash, I mean, for the, um, the uh, pancake brunch before Ash Wednesday, which is just in a couple of weeks. I can't believe it. And of course, we've been talking about the Lenten Lecture and Lunch series, which is on the horizon. And the speakers this year are going to be local food folks, food types, hospitality types. We've got our Lenten devotional in the works. Uh, Matthew and I are leading a conversation about cooking and the spirituality of cooking. You get the point. <laughs> so I have to ask, who among you are the cooks in the family? Yes, okay. Who among you are not the cooks in the family? <laughs> That's me. That's me. In fact, if you were to come to our house, one of the funniest things you will ever observe is when I say that I will cook and Matthew tries to instruct me. <laughs> For example, put a pinch of salt in that and I will literally grab a pinch of salt. And he's like, no, much more than that. Well, that's not a pinch. It makes me crazy when I watch these cooking shows. And they're like, oh, just add a pinch. I'm like, this is a pinch for me. And they grab a handful. All right? So salt in particular. We're talking about salt today. We're talking about cooking because it's one of the images that Jesus draws upon to talk to us about what it looks like to be a disciple. We are still in the Sermon on the Mount, right? That is Jesus' centerpiece in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. Last week, what did we hear Jesus talk about? The Beatitudes. Remember the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who search for righteousness. Blessed are all of those people that you wouldn't imagine would be blessed. That's who Jesus calls blessed, right? That's the beginning of his Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount is much longer, and we continue it today. But keep in mind that these Beatitudes are the centerpiece of Jesus' teaching. All the way through the Gospel of Matthew, the Beatitudes serve as the centerpiece. So, what's happening today? Jesus is talking about salt and light. Why? Because Jesus has put out his vision of who is blessed. It's kind of compared to Dr. King's I have a dream speech. This is Jesus' dream. This is God's dream, these beatitudes. He's laid it out for his disciples. And now he's saying to his disciples, now this is the way you've got to live that out. You can't just leave these beatitudes up here on this mountain. You have to take them out there with you. And that's why he's talking about salt, and that's why he's talking about light. Salt and light, things of everyday life. Salt, however, was considered a great prize. It was hugely sought after and you would be amazed at how important salt would have been in the ancient Near East and how it trickles into our life today for example the word salary comes from the word salt that which would have been given to a Roman soldier to purchase salt salt was needed and essential and the word salacious comes from the word salt Fertility. And then, of course, the idea of preserving. Salt preserves. But the most important thing about salt is that it does not do any good unless you put it with other things, unless you add it to the mix. 
This is what salt is intended to do, bring out flavor. And so what Jesus is saying is that you can't be salt if you just sit there doing nothing. You can't be salt if you just sit up here on this hill and hear these ways of being blessed and offering blessing and not taking that blessing out into the world. Be salt, he said. Live like salt. And salt needs to get out into the community because there are so many people out there who don't know that they are blessed. Go out there. Tell them they're blessed. Be like light. On its own, light doesn't really do much good. But the sole purpose of light in relationship to people is to illumine, to shine light on things, to make brighter people's paths, to take away darkness, and to shine into conversations that need to happen. You can't be light by staying on this hill. You can't be salt by staying on this hill, Jesus says to his disciples. And that's the same thing that Jesus is saying to us today. We've got to get out there. And we've got to offer the blessings, the interest, the enhancement, the ways of seeing things, the ways of looking things that I believe that this church is called to do and to be. We are blessed. We are salt. We are light. Notice that Jesus does not say, live this way, and then you will be blessed. Jesus says, you are blessed. Therefore, live this way. Live as salt. Live as light. This is the question that's put before every single one of us today. How are you living as light? And how are you living as salt? How are you disclosing blessing in other people's lives? And how are you pointing to ways that life can be different, more flavorful, more textured, more interesting, more expansive. This is what salt and light do, and this is what you and I are called to do. This afternoon, or after this service, we will have our annual parish meeting, the one time that we come together to talk about the business of the church. We'll talk about vestry elections. We'll talk about budgets. We'll talk about finance. But we'll also talk about a lot of things that are underneath and around that surround those things. And they all have to do with being salt and light in this community and in the world. All of the things that we'll talk about at this meeting have to do with the particular ways that you and I are called to get off of the mountaintop and be out in the world doing what God has called us to do. So I hope you'll come and I hope you'll hear about all of those things and listen to them through the lenses of the images that God has given us, that Jesus has given us today. We don't want to keep our light under a bushel, do we? We want to let it shine. We don't want to keep the salt all to ourselves. We want to sprinkle it out there. We want people to know about God's grace and love and justice. So I'm going to close today with a little reading from a book, and it's not the Bible. <laughs> it's a book called, it's a cookbook. <laughs> Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat by Samin Nasrat. See if you can hear what she says maybe through the lenses of what Jesus might be calling you and I to do today. Anything that heightens flavor is a seasoning. But the term generally refers to salt, since it's the most powerful flavor enhancer and modifier. If food isn't salted properly, no amount of fancy cooking techniques 
will make up for it. Without salt, without salt, unpleasant tastes are more perceptible and pleasant ones less so. Do you know how many times I hear people say that they love what we do at St. Paul's? They love the conversations we're having. They love that we are taking the lid off things and talking about them and looking at them. So here we go. Though in general, the absence of salt in food is deeply regrettable, its overt presence is equally unwelcome. <laughs> Food should not be salty. It should be salted. I don't know, St. Paul's. I think we can get a little salty. <laughs> and I think that's okay. The point is that all of us are called to contribute to the flavor profile. Every single one of us. There are so many different kinds of salt. And there are so many different types of flavors. And it's up to us to sprinkle into the mix. And don't think that what you do is not important. Because this is what one chef says about salt. Chef Judy Rogers often told her cooks that a dish might need seven more grains of salt. Just seven. What do you know? I count more than seven here. Do not underestimate the contributions that you make in your world, in your life, in the relationships that you have, in the visions that you have and that are given to you. Do not underestimate your salt, your light. St. Paul's, let's be salt. Let's be light as it was, as it is now, and as it will be unto the ages of ages. Glory to God whose power working in you can do infinitely more than you can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in this church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.